Good evening, everybody, and thanks for coming tonight to the uh, Board of Education regularly scheduled meeting. Um, has this meeting been properly noticed? Yes, it has. Will you please call the roll? Carlin? Here. Eliason? Here. Evans? Here. Garner? Here. Herzog? Here. Olmstead? Mitchell? Here. We have a quorum. Okay, and tonight we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Reagan Schaefer. <laughs> We should we should note the fact that you were bravely doing it by yourself. Oh Usually we have two or three, um, so uh, congratulations on <laughs> very bravely doing the pledge by yourself. Thanks. Okay, next is our art recognition awards. So you want to read the names? Yes. We will. And then we'll show the art up here, and then I will hand these out. So when you hear your name, just come on forward. Okay, are we ready? Mm -hmm. Lauren Bushley. Caleb Wendler. Theta Jung. Mei Yang, Ashley Neeson, Lauren Bushley, second one. Oh, no. Rec we were warned, we, we were warned two, two recognitions. <laughs> Nathan Tchaikovsky, Kashevilsky. Michaela Holtz, Madeline Coleman, Aiden Kruger, Anjo Tong, Jada Keslick, Caleb Gadella. Kara Smith. Nice job. Mary Dorschner. Madeline Arndt. Kristen Geffers. Kara Cummings, nice Ella Bougie, Bougie, Leah Barr, Noah Anthonson. Stella Victor Camillo Mallory Savannah Lohr and Abigail Cahill. Is there anybody here that did not get an award? That should have. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming.
course, you're welcome to stay, but don't feel obligated. <laughs> Okay, so next we're going to go into board and administrative reports. Um, I do have a couple of things tonight. Um, as the president, I am on the TIF committee for the city. So we had a meeting uh, for TIF that's coming up. It's the one that we've all been talking about for um, Oshkosh Corp. Um, it's going to be an industrial TIF, which is a little bit different, and it's going to last about 20 years. They're looking for um, $12 million. And they're going to be doing um, two different TIFs that they're going to be breaking up. One is going to be for improvements for that area where they're going to do river walk and they're going to do trails and they're going to extend Westfield and they're going to do lots of improvements in addition to the bigger TIF, which is then the site where they're going to put the um, Oshkosh Corp headquarters there. So um, there's two different TIFs. One is 12 million, one is 12 and a quarter. Um, they're going to also be looking at streetscaping. They're going to extend Sawyer to the north. Um, and then those trails are all going to hook up into the Butamore Bridge, that trail that heads over that way. So um, that's really exciting, exciting stuff. They're going to be voting on January 30th. The TIF committee will be voting on January 30th. So, And then the second thing is uh, tomorrow night, Oshkosh for Education is having their 2017 annual report to the community. I believe it starts at 5 or it opens at 5 at the waters. So if you can attend, that would be wonderful. Uh, and then next is superintendent's report. And then we will um, uh, defer, sorry. Um, yeah. first of all, to our students who um, I never want to duplicate. And you always have exciting things to deal with. And we'll start off with our Oshkosh North uh, High School student report, probably. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so I'll just start off by talking about what happened right before we <coughs> left for break. Okay, so we had our holiday week, and with our holiday week, we always have a series of dress-up days. Um, as you can see, a couple of students dressed up for our ugly sweater day, our fancy day, and flannel Friday as well. And then this year, we tried out a door decorating mm -hmm. um, competition, and some took it very seriously. As you can see, <laughs> we had the ONS ONHS selfie station, and that won, and the winner got a uh, donuts for their whole entire classroom. So that was kind of fun this year. And then we also had a balloon drop. And what was cool with this is that student council and our pride leadership team came together to recognize students. We sent out an email to all the teachers to um, fill out a pride card and to recognize students that were going above and beyond in the classroom. And we had 93 students in total. And what happened is each of the students came to the spiral staircase and with the help of Verb, we were able to rain down balloons that had money fell inside from one to twenty dollars. I don't know, I had a clip from it. I don't know if it would work. really all it was but it was really cool <laughs> um, apparently we didn't distribute the dollars enough so a couple people felt gypped but overall <laughs> I thought it was a great success <laughs> all right um, next um, speaking of working with people in the community our communities program um, had a little seminar called right for rights and it's just following the campaign following Amnesty Na International and the project was they would write letters to help people with civil rights issues. They, we had 800 participants and 3,700 letters were sent out to 10 Jeez. different countries. And um, I was speaking with uh, one of the community's teachers, Mr. Lieb, and he said that he was very excited for this and he hopes to continue this next year. 
All right, and then now we have to talk about some North Athletics. First, I'll start talking about basketball. Um, our male basketball team has been doing phenomenal. Um, we had our first loss of the season last night, but um, I spoke with senior Tyrese Halliburton, who recently surpassed 1,000 points, which is phenomenal. Oh yeah, and he said that they needed that, and they're excited to just continue <coughs> forth with the season. Um, our girls are still working towards their first win, but um, they're still very excited, and it's um, just great to see that they still have a lot of hope within them. All right, and then with wrestling, um, they have a 3-2 record, and over break, <coughs> senior Dalton Holmes actually won the um, On the Water Wrestling Tournament, and this was the first time we had someone win within the past 20 years, wow. so we're quite proud of Dalton. And then our dance team um, took third recently at the Oshkosh West Dance Invite, and um, they had a great time at that, and they're just preparing for the Kakana Dance Invite that's coming up. And then our swim team, um, they're doing great as well. They had senior night last night, and um, I know a couple of the boys had some interesting goggles to wear, so it was an important night for them. And as you can see, they have a couple more meets coming up, such as sectionals at Nina on February 10th, so be sure to come out. And that's really all we have. Here are a couple of events that we have coming up. Um, next month, we have our musical, Adam's Family, so I believe it's the 8th through the 11th, so be sure to come out and watch. Thank you. <coughs> All right, so I'm also going to start off with some a lot of activities that we had before break. One of our first ones was our first year um, doing this. It was called Holiday Jams, and last year we did an open mic night as a fundraiser for um, a charity, but this time we decided to redirect our interest for the students and just do um, something fun right before break. It was the Thursday night before break. We had cookies and muffins through um, donors, and students were able to come up and do some open mic stuff. We had holiday songs, um, Christmas songs, Hanukkah songs, we had the dreidel song going on numerous <laughs> amounts of times, probably like 12, but it was super fun and a lot of people showed up and it was really exciting. That morning we had to get up um, bright and early for our staff appreciation breakfast. This is our tradition we do every year the Friday morning before break starts and it's just to really appreciate our staff members to show them how much we really do appreciate them, and then our Magicals um, put on a phenomenal performance, as always. And of course, our staff first student basketball game. And every day, well, every Friday morning, our staff is, um, they get together and they do, uh, play some rounds of basketball. So the week before break, there's a competition for the student basketball team who will be playing against the staff. And the staff wins every single year, and it's been a, <laughs> It's been going on, I want to say, for like 10 years now. It was really close, three points, but last year was also really close, but the staff still won. <coughs> First sports updates, our boys basketball team is doing really well. They have won six games, lost three, but they are working extremely hard. Girls basketball is also doing um, pretty well. They've won two games, they've lost eight, but they are working hard as well. Our wrestling is two and six, but we recently um, one, one our meet and the other team scored zero points and we won everything. Boys swimming and diving is one and one right now. The dance team, they don't have dual meets, they have invites and stuff like that, but they are performing really well and they're also performing at the basketball games, which is really exciting to see. And gymnastics had their first dual meet and they won it. This past Saturday, AP government and politics students attended the We the People competition so I was a part of this, but um, throughout our AP government and politics class, we had judges come in and we performed in front of them and then through that, we were chosen for the state team. And then we went to state and each unit was talking about our US Constitution, the Bill of Rights, Declaration of Independence, Federalism, Anti-Federalists, all things relating to our government and the basis of it. And our judges, judges came in, we performed an essay, and then there was follow-up questions with no notes available to us. And we placed third out of four teams. Wow. And then our eighth grade orientation night, this was Monday, mm -hmm. and it was essentially all the eighth graders through um, districts who, I mean, sorry, schools who are coming <laughs> to Oshkosh West, 
were able to come to this. Uh, they had a meeting, and then they were able to go around and see different activities and sports that they are able to join when they come to Oshkosh West next year. And then upcoming events, January 19th, Boys and Girls Basketball Game um, versus North at North. It's a double header. And January 26th to January 28th, Oshkosh West Musical, My Fair Lady. And there's more information on their Facebook page. And then February 10th is our homecoming, too. And that's it. <laughs> OK, thank you very much. So we'll transition, we'll, into we'll the transition to the superintendent's good news report <coughs> for this month. Uh, Sherry today told me that the volume was down slightly because there's kind of a reactive delay after the holidays. So mm -hmm. we're a little bit shorter tonight. Uh, South Park Middle School's uh, EBD students worked on the December social skills theme by finding ways to show uh, others appreciation and thoughtfulness. Students deposited points they've earned into their daily monitoring sheet into a bank account that could later be used uh, to purchase gifts for family and friends whose names were uh, included on the list. The students created uh, of, of people uh, he or she would like to convey their appreciation towards. Students um, learned how to budget their points and keep track of their expenses coming out of their bank account. Staff uh, assisted in wrapping the gifts. It's in students enjoyed uh, the holiday fun by also decorating cookies. A big thank you uh, to that goes to all who donated to the Roosevelt's uh, food drive, uh, student staff, and uh, the and the school's pal Southwest Rotary collected over 1,400 canned goods for their for the local food pantry. Reed Elementary students uh, enjoyed their uh, and entertained uh, with traditional carols sung by the Oshkosh North Madrigals uh, singers during their lunchtime on December 20th. Oaklawn Elementary students sent out a thank you to the Oshkosh North and Oshkosh West. Uh, horticulture classes who organize greens in their school planters in preparation for the holiday season. And students at Oaklawn earned over 6,000 hoots. Remember their uh, theme, uh, their mascot is an owl, that's why it makes sense. As a part of PBIS since the beginning of the school year, as a reward for the classrooms that collected the most food items uh, in the Qantas food drive and were able to wrap uh, their teachers like they were giant Christmas presents in <laughs> celebration of their <laughs> accomplishment. Thanks to the generosity of the South Park Middle School staff and families, 23 South Park students had a brighter holiday season with wonderful gifts, many of whom were nece uh, necessi necessity items. Sixth grade science students worked to develop an engineering project to solve problems they saw in their school, some of which were inclu included lost pencils, long lines at the water fountain, problematic uh, shoelaces, and more. Under the new uh, science curriculum unit of engineering, students practiced um, their uh, problem solving skills by identifying the problem, surveying the data, developing a solution, testing the solution, and then evaluating the success of their solution. 4K students um, from uh, Community Christian Child Care uh, collected toys, gift cards, and other gifts for uh, their children uh, Christmas breakfast party and held at Father Carr's. More than 200 children from the community attended this event for breakfast to see Santa and to receive a toy. What's a, what a wonderful lesson is in giving uh, these 4K students whose, eye, whose eyes lit up when they saw the items that they had collected. Tipler and ALP, uh, ALP students um, uh, and staff celebrated their PBIS accomplishments with their annual student basketball game on December 22nd. Uh, students um, could use their ROAR tickets uh, for drawings um, for VIP seating that included snacks. The front row viewing of the game uh, had those with the front row viewing had a chance to throw a pie in the face mm. of. Mr. Wachholz, um, he's sure enjoying himself at Tipler these days. The, the Tipler staff, uh, Tipler band did an awesome job of entertaining the crowd uh, during the halftime, all with students enjoying this exciting yearly event. Communities One at Oshkosh North uh, High School learned about human rights and um, uh, I think we've already had that covered so I won't duplicate uh, 
uh, our uh, student report on the issue. And thank you to members of the First English Church who supplied uh, the kindergarten students at Jefferson Elementary with gift bags filled with books, puzzles, and games, as well as uh, hand-knit scarves, hats, and mittens mm -hmm. to keep warm this winter. Uh, what a thoughtful gesture uh, during the holiday seasons, season. Uh, the students wrote uh, thank you letters to in appreciation to the uh, gifts and uh, for the gifts and send a thank you, a huge thank you for their wonderful neighbors. Now, on January 6th, Oshkosh West uh, dance team hosted the fourth annual Oshkosh we um, uh, West Wildcat Invite with 32 teams uh, that part uh, participated in that event and with 530 um, dance participants and 1,400 spectators, making a very successful, profitable fundraiser. Thanks to all who um, made this event great. And on that day, the Oshkosh West team, we've already heard, has done well in their, uh, in their competition. During the Wild Wildcat in invite, uh, Christina Robbie, um, one of the Oshkosh West dancers, completed her capstone project to receive a Global Scholar Certificate um, holding a penny drive. Uh, her goal was to collect $300, and which, um, she surpassed by some $59.82. All of the money collected is donated for disadvantaged in Nicaragua and included a dance class um, after school. And congratulations to Christina. The uh, last are the events in the last uh, two-week period. I should note that that engineering project with shoelaces being mm -hmm. um, um, it is inevitable when I'm visiting a school, I have little boys especially um, uh, look at me, look up and say, you know, could you tie my shoe? <laughs> and I think I, I have tied shoes in, in um, 50, 60 classrooms over um, the last um, uh, five, six months that um, they identify somebody who might know how to tie a shoe, and it helps. So, so um, you would know. but it's a, it, it's a little scary when you see uh, youngsters running with untied <laughs> shoes anyway, so I'm glad to get that done. Someone's going to solve that. And that completes the superintendent's <laughs> awesome. report. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Uh, on to other reports. Committee chairs. Um, any reports? Education. Okay. Uh, the Education Committee met on Thursday, January 4th at 8.30 in the morning. It was kind of a short meeting. We spent the majority of the time speaking about the um, integrated school-to-work program in partnership with Oshkosh Corporation. We had Julie Conrad and Nicole Peterson sharing with us how quickly the project is taking shape. Um, Nicole spoke about a team at Oshkosh Corps that is working on the school-to-work program from the technical and academic side. Supervisors and leaders in assembly, in welding and painting, et cetera, are reviewing what skills are needed for students to succeed in the program, while Fox Valley Technical College has offered their services to assist in getting this program up and running as well. There are weekly meetings that are taking place, centering on laying out the technical side of the curriculum. Integrating content of curriculum will provide students with opportunities to realize how content areas like physics are actually being used in day-to-day -day employment applications. Uh, Oshkosh Corps is setting the pace for this project and they are currently reviewing their training and onboarding processes to be integrated into the program. Um, a meeting explaining the, this program to parents will be held this month in January. In February, the application pro process will begin and in March and April, students will be chosen. We will choose 12 juniors that will be eligible for the Integrated School to Work program in the fall. And next spring, an additional 12 students will be eligible for the program as well. If the program is successful with Oshkosh Corp, we hope that it will open the doors for, to opportunity with other companies in the community as well. Um, there's more detail about the project if anyone wants to go online and look at the minutes. Um, we discussed some future meeting agenda items, a PAL update, K-12 vision of technical literacy, and in March we're going to do the science field test update by Julie Conrad. Our next meeting is February 1st at 8.30 in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Any other reports? Yes, I, <clears throat> I get to give one of my occasional energy committee reports, <laughs> uh, since we only meet about four times a year. Um, we met this past Monday, the January 8th, and the first thing that we did was welcome Mary Beth Petish, who is now the committee's new community representative. Oh. Um, and then she gave a little background on herself to the, to the committee. Um, website energy update link. Um, everything is up to date on the website 
and to see how the, the district is doing with their energy savings uh, you go to our the district website of course and you click on business maintenance and then utilities and then it's all graphed out and the lines are trending down so that's a good thing um, energy club updates uh, Oshkosh West High School has formed an energy club it's in its infancy stage but they are working to build themselves up um, focus on energy program uh, this is a program that helps <coughs> schools put energy programs in and they give some rebates and stuff. We were looking at North, Jefferson, and Oaklawn, and it appears that Jefferson Elementary is the only school that would qualify for the, the Focus on Energy program, so they're going to be following up with that. Um, we had a facilities update for energy um, savings. This is the last year of the Phase 9 energy projects. The bulk of the work will be completed in the early fall 2018. The major projects is Webster's having an air handler replacement. Uh, West High School is replacing a large air handler in the band and choir area and two transfer fans near the locker rooms. Um, Carl Traeger, major upgrade to air handler that will include adding technology and replacing some things from which when the building was built. And then Oshkosh West High School is having a, a huge glass replacement. They're trying to get rid of all the single pane glass with insulated glass um, and then it was just uh, re-educating everybody on energy saving um, things to do like having your radiators clear of, of blockage and keeping the classroom doors they're just trying to remind everybody again to be conscious of, of things to do um, we're also going to be having a presentation at the wasp bowl um, on the energy savings that we have accomplished through that energy referendum project. And um, the last thing that we did was uh, we toured Perry Tipler to get an actual idea of what all these things look like, air handlers and all that. And that was pretty cool um, how they uh, have it all tied into their computer system where if a room looks it's cooler, it shows up on their computer, they can tap on that room and you can see exactly what is going wrong. That's and cool. if it's serious, oftentimes they know what needs to be done before the repair people get there. So that's a pretty, pretty interesting tour. And who knew Perry Tipper had a basement? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, our next meeting is going to be April 23rd at 6, 8.30 in the morning. Thank you. Any other reports? Wonderful, then we will go right into our workshop for tonight, which is a facility study cost impact and long range facilities master planning. Jim was at a town of Algoma meeting tonight, so I'm really glad he made it back. So, um, Their meeting was quicker than yours. <laughs> um, as you know, we did that um, facility study. It's a document that's probably about this thick. I should have brought the binder in so you could see how thick it was. Um, so tonight's workshop is kind of the extension of that. It, uh, um, Bay, Bray has done a cost estimate of what it would cost to do all of those projects in that book. And then we're also going to talk about some facilitation of some master planning. So I'll turn it over to Jim and to Bray. No, that's exactly right. Uh, as, as you recall, we had uh, indicated in facilities and finance and we had spoken to the board earlier. Uh, we had gone through and uh, with Matt here uh, and Kara, we had gone through the facility study, the, the large document. We had also shared with you that it is available online for your viewing. Uh, tonight is really to uh, come to a conclusion on that study by adding the fiscal element to it, you know, really sharing what expected cost or projected cost could be um, given all the repairs required as part of that study. And then uh, the second part of the presentation would be uh, to discuss the uh, master plan that we're proposing for Oshkosh Area School District. Uh, in general, what, what does it encompass? What does it look like? What is this process? How does it start? Uh, how are we going to proceed through it? And what does the conclusion look like? Um, and then, of course, the questions we have along the way. So 
Uh, with me tonight, uh, representing Bray, is uh, Kara, Clint, and in the back of the room, Tyler. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for having us here today. Um, so, as part of the facility study document, um, we just wanted to recap on that initial first phase quickly. Um, so, the first phase of the study document, we did some extensive information gathering, went on a series of building tours where we brought our architectural staff as well as the um, associated engineers from mechanical, electrical, plumbing, as well as civil engineers. And from that, we took a look at architectural and site analysis. So looking at the building from an interior and exterior um, perspective, looking at the site, exterior site as well, um, engineering building systems. Um, so our engineers um, went through the buildings with us um, and were able to look at plumbing, HVAC, and electrical. Um, we also compared all the buildings to the American uh, Disabilities Act and um, were able to compare all the buildings and how they corresponded um, with the standards set forth. And all the while, we worked alongside the district, Jim, and his maintenance team, um, as well as the building custodians as well, um, to incorporate their feedback and um, cross-check and touch base from time to time. I'm not going to go into these too much in detail because, again, we've touched on this, but these are some of the contents of that original study document, so the needs analysis, um, or needs assessment, that one in particular looking at the architectural analysis. Um, site summaries were provided by civil. Um, again, the ADA needs assessment and analysis. Um, roof plans and analysis. Um, and for the roof plans in particular, the district has um, been working alongside an external uh, roofing consultant. And so we were able to work with Jim to gather that information and summarize it into that document as well. Um, so just to um, just to uh, touch base on what the facility did not include, um, it is not an analysis of the quantity, size, or um, quality of educational space. Um, it is not an exploration of solutions to any of these problems that were vetted through the study. Um, it is not an evaluation of schools um, in terms of educational capacity and it is not an estimate or approximation of how long an existing material or system may last if well maintained. Um, it does not include a recommendation on which upgrades should be prioritized over others. So you'll see in the budgets that we're essentially including a laundry list of everything that applies across the district, across the board, um, in terms of different categories. So essentially that would be um, including everything. Um, and it is not a projection of what these needs may cost to be repaired or replaced in the future. And so we'll, we'll skip to the cost analysis portion. So this is our um, phase two of the initial facility study assessment. And we took that information from our facility study document, um, so the architectural needs analysis, the building system summary, the exterior site analysis, to name a few categories, and implemented that into a facility study budget. Um, so that included infrastructure or maintenance improvements across the district, um, looking at interior and exterior building upgrades, building systems, and exterior improvements to name a few categories. So, and this is a little small on the screen, but I believe we handed this out to each of you as well. It's also included in your packet. Yep. Yes. So, um, before we dove into, thank you. Before we dove into the budgets, we needed to make a series of assumptions or standards to apply to each of the buildings. Um, so the first one being that all projected costs are based on 2018 pricing. Um, future projected costs would need to account for inflation. Um, typically, right now, we're seeing about plus or minus 4% annually being added on to that number. Um, estimated project costs account for supplementary items that include but are not limited to the following. So overhead and profit, insurance, bond payment performance, um, estimated construction costs, it estimated soft costs, um, so all of your, your legal fees, things like that. Um, ADA accessibility analysis, as I mentioned, um, was based on building code requirements uh, that are um, satisfied under the American with Disabilities Act and regulated by the American National Standard Accessible and Usable Buildings and Facilities. 
um, exterior cleaning and tuck pointing. So this um, applied to a series of different categories within our estimates. So at this time, because we're kind of standing at that 50,000 um, levels or foot level, um, we're very initially, um, or we're very early on in the process. And so for certain categories, we needed to apply um, a standard that we could apply to every building and be able to um, compare apples to apples from one building to the next. So exterior cleaning or tuck pointing was one of those categories. Um, estimates are based on the existing building size and square footage. And then we associated a dollar allowance corresponding to an evaluation of need, um, again, based on our information from the facility study document, um, at a minimal, moderate, or excessive level. Um, interior wall repair was another one. Um, you're really, you're not gonna know all the ins and outs of that until those initial mm -hmm. projects start being constructed. Um, and so for that one in particular, we did the same thing based on a dollar per square, per square foot allowance and corresponding to an evaluation of need at a minimal, moderate, or excessive level. Um, for casework, so this would be all of your cabinetry um, within each of the classrooms. Um, this would be any casework that is non-science or non-ADA associated. Um, we created a dollar allowance, and that was also working with the district um, for each of the buildings, and it was based on um, the building typology. So all elementary schools received a certain amount of money, um, all middle schools, and the high school as well, or high schools. Um, science casework, a little bit different because of um, what's included in science casework. Uh, we gave a different allowance, and that applied to your middle schools and your high schools. Um, again, roof replacement estimates were not calculated by us. Um, those refer to um, a document provided by the district um, that included the roof replacement dollars, and that was from the 10-year budget for 2016 to 2017. So um, we referred to that and implemented that within our budgets. Um, thank you. And then um, infrastructure improvement, interior and exterior building upgrades, es upgrades estimates uh, reflect information and analysis included in the facility study document, um, building systems as well, um, and those are all um, based on information from our engineers for mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, and same thing for our exterior improvements. Site development um, estimates were provided by our um, corresponding civil engineers as well and included in that phase one of the study document. I do have a question. Um, yes. The ADA requirements, did you include, um, because we are grandfathered in in many cases from a st structure mm -hmm. uh, on um, uh, ADA uh, compliance, but uh, did you include the cost of compliance if we, we, we disturb the building, then we are in a position to yes, exactly. be required to so do so. So essentially, some of your buildings, such as Merrill, for example, um, mm -hmm. it's a very old building. It was constructed in different pieces. Um, so there are things that might have been grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. We decided to take the standard approach that if you're touching the building, it needs mm -hmm. to be updated. Right. Um, does that, mm -hmm. that answer? Right. But there too, it's, it's the level at which you're touching it. it yeah. Just because you would, uh, say, uh, renovate a classroom such as this, it wouldn't mean you'd have to do the entire building for ADA. Right. Mm -hmm. But again, it, it gives you a sense of magnitude. It gives you a sense that if we start to do work in that building, these are the things we need to consider as we move forward. Yeah, it's <coughs> frequently confused uh, on the uh, issue that, um, that recognition that the cost will escalate once we do some major renovation. Right, and it's not an indication per se that your buildings are not accessible as they are, it's just what would additional would need right. to be done to sure. some of those, again, those older elements that maybe haven't been touched um, sure. before. Good, thank you. Of course. Um, and so this is looking at that overall snapshot. Um, you guys should have this page as well. Mm -hmm. um, and this is looking at all buildings. Um, so don't get too scared by the overall totals with these. But what we did is we um, gave you the total at the top and then also broke it down um, by educational facilities. I know it's all educational, but essentially your schools in the first bucket. Um, and so we have elementary and combined um, elementary middle schools in one bucket. Um, so you'll see in that lightest blue color, um, the amount there. Down to middle schools, we categorize those um, as well, um, and then the high schools, and then any administrative or supportive buildings, such as your administration building, the maintenance building, and the recreation building. Okay. 
Just a couple of notes again. Uh, this this is obviously a snapshot in time. So as uh, as the district staff goes through and does fixes some of these things, there's probably items on this list that, that may have already been done. You know, since this report was um, completed. So again, this is this is a snapshot in time. And also the the question you you may ask is, well, how you know that's a that's a big dollar amount. Again, as uh, I'm sure most taxpayers would say, my my goodness, that that's that's a, that's a large dollar amount. And and again, we we took a very comprehensive approach mm -hmm. to this. There's no level of prioritization um, put to this effort. And we would say, as far as a comparative, um, you know, what how does this compare when we do this process in other school districts? This is um, this is where we would I mean where we would see most districts sort of landing with, especially with this number of buildings uh, again it's not an indictment that the district isn't doing a great job with their buildings and facilities and maintaining them you are doing a great job again it's just those those items that just can do to your your overall annual budgets you can't get to and, and they, they, they add up over time mm -hmm. yeah, and, and bearing in mind we're now approaching <coughs> an average age of 80 years old on our facilities which has to be among the oldest collection of uh, buildings in the state of Wisconsin and so this page here is essentially taking that overall um, spreadsheet that we showed you on the previous slide and it's starting to pull out some of those different categories that were assessed in our budget analysis um, so you can see on the left side of the um, of the chart, you'll see our buildings listed in that similar format from the last slide. Um, and then we broke it out by category under interior and exterior building upgrades. Um, we assessed, again, that ADA accessibility. Um, building exterior, so this is looking at um, exterior materials on the building, uh, wall composition, um, anything that stuck out to us um, during our tours. Um, building interior, looking at all interior walls, looking at interior doors, um, any borrowed lights or um, windows that are on the interior of the building. Um, that was all broken into that third category. Um, and then odor, owner items or FF&E, um, those are items that are your casework. So again, all the cabinetry, the science casework, um, any kind of lockers, um, things that, um, that are kind of, they're typically addressed in an um, owner item budget um, and then again looking to building systems um, we separated out by plumbing HVAC and electrical and we were able to um, get some overall estimates from our engineers um, and then exterior improvements was looking at the site and again um, looking to our civil engineers and for um, at the end of this uh, chart you will see that the overall um, estimated project cost sums up all those categories on the left. Um, and then also because we have the breakdown by school or building, you can see the, um, the rows going across will show you for each individual building as well. Can I ask a question? Yes. Do you want us to wait or do you want us to? Um, that should be fine. Okay. Go ahead. Um, just, just for a conversation in regards to those schools where there is an elementary school and a middle school together, you've got those numbers combined here. Is that a 50-50 split or is there, how does that break down in, I in those I believe areas? what we did is we considered both of them. So for science casework, for example, okay. that would have been included in the budgets, um, say at uh, Merrill Elementary or Webster Stanley. Okay. So there were certain categories that would be affected um, for certain buildings okay. included in the budgets. Okay. And so then we did have um, a case study looking at Smith Elementary School. Um, I don't know how much <coughs> time we want to spend on going through the nitty gritty details of, um, of this budget, but know that uh, we do have the extensive budgets um, available and they do, we do have an assessment similar to what we have here for Smith Elementary School for each of the buildings. So again, you can see at the top of the page, um, Smith Elementary School, we've broken it down by that um, interior and exterior building upgrades um, under infrastructure improvement. So starting with ADA accessibility, um, we can just highlight a couple of those different pieces. Um, we had um, adding, uh, replacing railings, for example, that do not meet the ADA standards um, and requirements. So we went through and we identified them in the buildings um, 
and we had highlighted those in our needs analysis. A lot of the infrastructure upgrades you'll see in that building needs assessment um, portion of the document. Um, and so we associated a unit cost and then per lineal foot for that um, to come up with an estimated uh, number and then again applying um, those additional uh, numbers for overhead profit insurance, um, estimated construction costs, soft costs, things like that um, to total up to an estimated project cost on the right. And so we went through um, a significant amount of categories pertaining to ADA accessibility. Um, again, looking at things like um, door hardware. If all the hardware, if it's that old knob hardware or is it the lever style that's required by ADA. Um, building exterior, uh, that's where we are looking at exterior walls, as I mentioned earlier. Um, that's where we also included the partial uh, roof replacement numbers, and those were the numbers associated from that 2016 to 2017 um, maintenance report. Um, building interior, again, interior wall replacement. Um, for some of these, you can see if you look under building interior, uh, and I know this is a little small on the screen, I apologize, um, but the wall repair replacement, for example, that was one of those um, scenarios where we associated um, a specific uh, dollar amount um, based on if it was a minimal, moderate, mm -hmm. or um, extensive need. And then again, apply that to the total square footage for the building. Um, and again, that's just a great way to compare apples to apples when you go from one building to the next. Um, some other things in building interior, looking at um, interior windowsill replacement, um, some ceiling replacement, lots of uh, spline ceilings. Um, so um, including that number as well. Um, and all these numbers, we worked alongside Jim and his staff in the district to um, cross check that uh, these numbers are what we're seeing, um, as well as something from a maintenance perspective. Um, their, your district felt comfortable with those numbers as well. We're fortunate to have a lot of work bidding in the last really th two to three months as well. So um, uh, again, in terms of numbering, uh, we, we have a lot of recent data to look back upon as well. Mm -hmm. All right, and then so under building systems, again, this is looking at your plumbing. Um, they went into some details such as uh, domestic water and plumbing equipment, looking at if you need a new water service. Um, so if you add it onto a building and you need to sprinkle the building, um, what kind of some overall costs were for that. Um, water piping was another thing that they looked at. Um, sanitary and storm piping, um, plumbing fixtures throughout all the buildings as well. Um, HVAC for this particular <coughs> building, um, there was, you can see, not a lot of need right there. Um, I think that that's an, a testament to um, the district's work on uh, their HVAC projects um, throughout the building, or throughout the district. Um, and then electrical, looking at electrical services, um, light fixtures and controls, interior, exterior lighting, egress lighting, emergency lighting, um, wiring devices, um, cat TV systems, uh, clock systems, fire alarm systems, um, and then the exterior improvements, site development, um, this was from our, um, our civil engineers um, looking at different areas on each of the sites. Um, and this corresponds to the site diagram that is in that initial phase one uh, study document. And looking at the different areas, what is um, some concerns that they had and some projects, potential projects that um, they might have at those different areas. So it's important for me to mention um, there is no particular reason that Smith was represented on this particular slide. We picked a name out of a hat. Um, so um, I, I don't want there to be any feeling that uh, we were displaying Smith for any particular reason. This um, was a great job, by the way, but uh, this was meant to be a representation of exactly how every single school would be presented in their financial analysis. So as you go through the financial analysis, Kara, again, did a, a wonderful job of explaining because every single school will be represented the same way in the same order uh, of every single part of that building. So if you have a better understanding of, of how they process through and, and develop uh, their costs as well. 
What um, what did you do with the, um, I think which is unique across the district, um, the uh, non-operating fireplace in the kindergarten classroom at Smith? Did you include a... Um, um, it's not estimate. category, maybe. Yeah, yeah I don't. I don't uh, believe did that. Did you just we, ignore it? I or, don't believe we included that, but yeah, if we need but, to um, address but the, that, we it, can include. It, it. I think that is a unique, um, wonderful. Um, <coughs> uh, many old kindergarten classrooms had fireplaces in them. I'm mm -hmm. not sure when they were ever used, but um, uh, but uh, uh, the reality is that I believe that is our only um, fireplace in the in the. Uh, and, and just to assure uh, all parents, we it's. I'm sure it's not operated for mm -hmm. 55 years or 75 <laughs> years, but um, it's a wonderful um, setting. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Are there any questions on the financial portion of the facility? Yeah, I don't know if you wanted to introduce this part or... Um well, uh, as I had uh, discussed, uh, the next item that we wanted to talk about was the introduction of the master plan for the school district. Uh, we had talked several times in past board meetings about where do we go now that we've, you know, we've completed the uh, analysis of our facilities, we have a better understanding and I feel like enough data that we can we can share quite a bit of information with you, a snapshot of today, what the facilities look like, uh, what we're seeing, what, what architectural firm is seeing. Uh, but where do we go from here? That's always been the question that a lot of people ask. How, how do we spend our, our taxpayer dollars wisely? Uh, where do we invest? Where don't we invest? And, and those are all very good questions. They're very detailed questions, very difficult questions. Uh, I think the next important step uh, and speaking with uh, several school districts and architectural firms is really for Oshkosh uh, to go down the path of developing a master plan. Uh, and we're going to discuss in, in more detail, you know, really what does that plan look like? Uh, we can't add detail to the plan right now because that detail is developed. This is really more of a, a skeleton and we add meat onto the bones as we, as we pursue down the path of the master plan. And, but the end result of the master plan is to have a a plan in place to which we have developed, we mean the school, you know, the, the school system, the city, and, and the entities that were involved within that plan, uh, that we can hand off to, to next boards, to next administration, to next uh, uh, facilities managers to, that, that we've done our due diligence and we've looked at our buildings and, and we've invested in the community and we've asked the right questions at the right time. And this is where we felt that our dollars were best spent and this is the direction that we're going to go. And then we don't have to ask necessarily all those hard questions we've we've done that heavy lifting mm -hmm. so with that uh, Clint I guess if you could start to explain what does this plan look like uh, should the uh, Oshkosh area school board choose to invest in it um, how do we begin where do we go sure um, so what we have uh, as uh, Tyler has up on the screen here is a um, it, it would be a recommendation starting point this is not the answer but um, it's a um, process that we've been using in a number of different school districts very successfully um, as of late uh, I'm sure as many of you are aware or you've maybe perhaps gone through the process there's many many different ways um, to go through this um, the traditional way uh, we'll say was usually an administrative or board led effort where you um, you know assess what you felt your needs were and and you would go forth uh, with a with recommendation and potentially a referenda um, and I think you know the lessons learned from that it was you know generally the community felt left out in the process or there you know there wasn't that type of thing um, so kind of the evolution of that was to create a, a large um, community committee and, and have them all really along for the ride um, the school district the board would develop a charge and the community would go forth and learn about your district um, um, come up with solutions, consider solutions, discuss, and then hopefully ultimately come back with some form of uh, a recommendation. Um, definitely a, a great process, but um, we, we've, we've seen challenges over the years with that, and um, a lot of times there's friction between what they come back with and what the board thinks they should come back with. That's usually the most common one. And um, ultimately in a district of this size, you know, the 
fear would be that you you would you know have a situation such as that. So this hybrid uh, method that we have um, on the board tonight is um, uh, what we've what we've seen working very well. So the top um, section there would be your um, your third party entities um, uh, assisting uh, you with it. Uh, again, advisory facilitation ex experts, at, uh, as it states up there, um, consisting of your financial advisor, um, potentially an, an enrollment projection um, advisor. Um, UW Applied Population is probably the one of the more popular ones that um, is considered for that. Um, uh, your architectural partner, engineering as, as well. Uh, again, our, our um, engineering support would continue through this process as well. And then, um, the recommendation of a survey process to be uh, utilized uh, along with this. And um, kind of, uh, I'll get to this eventually, but I, I think the key component of the survey is um, you're not going to referendum, you're going to survey. And that's really, I think, the key distinction of this process is that end game may not be a referendum, it just may be this inf information gathering that you get from the survey process. So that team um, essentially supports, again, what we're calling this core planning team. And that consists, again, of uh, it, uh, more or less your administrators. And from there, we go out to kind of uh, your uh, the stakeholders within this, which include the school board, which include community partners, which include uh, staff, um, and also include uh, you know schools and, and, and parents as well as part of that. And what that looks like is again maybe our um, scenario is is our core team is meeting every two weeks or every week or what have you. Um, we would then check in with those other entities either as needed. Again, the schools we would you know probably only check in with them as we're uh, maybe discussing the specific issues with their building. Um, same with parents, uh, community members looking for opportunities for partnerships potentially. Um, the school board, maybe that would be a regular thing where we would bring updates and kind of uh, fill you in periodically, whether again, whether that's <coughs> monthly or bi-monthly um, along the way. But really um, just creating, uh, the forming and shaping a, a series of, of options um, that that might look like. Um, it could be um, ultimately, again, the, the, the core team really needs to consider, I think, as many op options as possible. So there might be 40 options, there might be 30 options. Again, we want to make sure we're testing a number of different things that might involve, again, great configurations. We don't want to get into that tonight, obviously, but um, really want to making sure what's best for Oshkosh moving forward and what's best for the kids. So from there, um, as indicated below, really then that does lead into a series of community engagement sessions or kind of focus groups. And we make sure that each of those um, engagement sessions has a specific theme or agenda that we are trying to um, uh, relate to the community. So again, you're still kind of bringing them along on that process. We're allowing them to have a voice. We're allowing them to have uh, to have feedback through this process, um, but it's in a, 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 I think a more controlled, condensed manner than you'd typically see kind of in that long drawn out community process. Um, in between each of those meetings, we again would have a, a, a kind of a feedback uh, session, maybe like this, a work, work uh, site type session with the board to uh, relay the messages that we've been heard, uh, relay um, whatever the core planning team uh, work has done in between those times as well and again, move forward. Um, again, and then as it states, ultimately this leads us to uh, a community survey. So that's kind of the overall structure of it. Um, if you turn to kind of the next page, and, and again, this, um, the, the dates shown on here are, are not correct. They're, they were just um, shown to represent the, the main, the main uh, I think point in terms of, of timing and <coughs> schedule for this is the kind of the top thing where it states 13 13 to 15 months. Again, this can be done uh, in a shorter time period, but we believe this is is a very good time period, especially considering uh, the size of your district and kind of the intricacies that we'll be dealing with uh, moving through this process. So again, this is a, a, a there's a, again a lot of information, uh, specific information on here. I think the the main talking point though is is that 13 to 15 month process for this. And as it states, the, the kind of point four there is, is that community survey. So you go through this process to go to survey. And then from there, you, you tweak and finalize and really determine what, what the next steps are um, moving forward for your district. 
Um, I'll also state sometimes this, the survey kind of can be approached from a number of different ways. Um, this is a first and foremost a master pl master planning effort, so we want to look towards a, a, a vision, a, a goal. Um, the, so the survey can test that goal, or the survey could test you know a, a certain phase or, or something like that that you might consider to achieve that master planning or maybe the survey is twofold you test a big picture goal and then have to come back later to see what uh, the phasing would be to to get to that so again uh, how that exactly looks in, in the end is different than this but uh, again just to give you a sense or a roadmap of, of what this process can look like mm -hmm. So any questions or clarification? I'm, I'm not clear on the, um, what's the end in mind with the survey? Well, I mean, ultimately we are, um, uh, the, the end in mind is to get statistical data to, to move forward with, uh, again, whether it's a direction, it's a big picture direction for the district. I, I, I don't, again, don't presume to know what that is because I don't think we do know what that is yet, but whether it's a big picture or it's it's a series of, of projects or it's a prioritization, there's a, there's a number of different um, ways. But the purpose of the survey is to get, to get predictive, to get data, to reach every single person or as, as many of the voting people as we can uh, within your district to, to, and to get their feedback. Because the reality is the, the community sessions, we, we hope to get great turnout, but um, in, in general, that they're not. It's not going to be a representation of your entire district. It's going to be, you know, a, a vocal minority in most cases, per perhaps. And it might be geared towards very supportive parents. It, it might be, you know, uh, geared, you know, very pro pro school. And when you do the survey, you get statistical data of of the people that are actually voting and reach, you know, you reach more people. Again, we've seen that that process uh, prove itself out num time and time again um, in, in every district across the state. Okay, I'm trying to connect the dots here. Okay. You, you spent a lot of time, good time, um, sharing with us uh, data across all the buildings across various categories. Now you're talking about a survey. Are you are you talking about presenting these data to the people and saying what do you think of this or? No, not necessarily. Well, that, it, not, no, I don't need to connect those um, dots. Okay. No, it, 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 again, that's that's information that will inform whatever uh, whatever direction we would head out in, into. Again, the uh, and to step back, this master planning process also takes, <coughs> I think, really takes into consideration the educational needs of, mm -hmm. of the buildings. Again. The, the data that you have before here doesn't move any walls. It doesn't consider how many kids you have in classrooms. Mm -hmm. And really that's what this next process goes through is to, 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 to vet the buildings, to vet um, what the true needs are and how do we get to, uh, again, a direction that the, the Oshkosh School District wants to move in going forward. Having worked um, in a similar project with major renovations for school district and upgrading and adjusting for educational changes as well as enrollment changes um, it would also uh, uh, such a survey would address the potential appetite both for ideas on what are some of the uh, 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 buildings that should be tackled mm -hmm. but also the size and appetite for a mm -hmm. um, uh, community support for a bond issue reference I uh, think um, I think to kind of dovetail uh, off of what was said it Really, the group is the group's charge. Um, we had mentioned thirty or forty possible scenarios. That as we meet with the groups and as we as we research the educational requirements of a of, of a facility, we may uh, take a look at transportation costs and busing and, and how we're moving, uh, how how much our, our teachers are moving in order to handle education and how many schools do we have and are, are they positioned properly? And there's a lot of data coming in. And that group is looking at these, and, and we're re you know we're evaluating what is the Oshkosh model for our elementary schools and our middle schools and our high schools, and how do we want to best educate those children? And we're we're developing and looking at square footages for our educational spaces mm -hmm. and comparing them to to where our our neighbors are and, and where more specifically we want to be. And once we start to digest all of that information and we're able to start creating some scenarios, we may have 30, 20, 30, 40 different scenarios of what we 
what we think we want to do with our district long term. Again, remember this is always looking down the road 20, 30, 40 years. And then we start to pare down those, those potential plans. Um, because those plans, of course, when, when you think about what could happen to a district of this size uh, through growth, uh, through attrition, <coughs> you can just imagine the vast amount of possibilities. So as we start to pare down those particular ideas and start to streamline those, we, we, start to be, we start to get a more clear picture. And eventually you get down to a point where you've got a couple of, of fairly clear, reasoned um, um, ideas, concepts of, of what the school district could look like moving mm -hmm. forward with regard to our facilities, with regard to education, classroom sizes, everything, all in one package. And then the, as we said, our, our goal, end goal is not specifically to go to referendum with that idea. The end goal then is to validate what conclusion we have come to within those, within those groups, working with the board, with, with those many, many meetings, by going out to the community and saying, this is what we think. Here, here's where we think we want to go. This is the idea, or this is the one or two ideas. This is the big picture. This is, in the short term, where we think we want to go. How do you feel about that? What do you think? Mm -hmm. and, it, and Clint had said correctly, it's to validate everything that we've done, because we, we don't want to make the assumption that all the meetings and all the people that have attended are 100% a representation of the entire city of Oshkosh and, and the parents and all the various groups that go into the city. Um, this is just another check in that whole system of communication to make sure that, yep, we're on track. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we think we've got it dialed in as best we can with as many people as we can. We feel this is a good idea. Once we have a validated idea coming out of that, then it's our charge, more specifically your charge as a school board, to be able to say, okay, here's our map. We understand that people agree with it now. How do we want to start moving down that road? So, does that help? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. it does. Thank okay. You. Any other questions? Yes. I'd like to go back to your staff report that we received last Friday. I have a couple of questions about it. Under Major Point A, you have August 1st, Bray presented the district the completed facility study. I'm assuming that's August 1st, 2017? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the big book. Okay. It doesn't give a year here, so I wasn't sure what August 1st you were, ref you were referring to. Um, and then under C, it notes the district's purchasing policy requires multiple quotes for items above 15,000. Um, you did not seek multiple quotes on this project because it's the next step, step in the facility study process, <coughs> excuse me, which was originally bid out. Policy does allow for exemptions exceptions where seeking quotes would not result in a savings to the district. Bray can assist the district with this process at that cost because they are familiar with the district and its facilities. What cost are you referring to in that Correct. paragraph? So uh, the idea was that um, because Bray had done the initial study and they had spent so much time sure. and their knowledge base is so deep with regard to our facilities, it's an attribute, mm -hmm. it's an asset to what will be this um, second part of the phase, which is a really the final phase unless we choose as a district to move forward with any type of uh, referenda. Um, to, to put this out to bid, um, where they are $2,000 above the threshold for mandatory bidding, while we could have done that, it is our opinion that we would have um, potentially lost a great resource in Bray given the amount of time that they have invested in this, in our facilities with this study in addition to the amount of time that they've invested in our facilities and past construction projects. It made a great deal of sense, given the dollar amount that we're looking at, to be able to utilize the acquired knowledge that they have within their own uh, architectural firm and be, to be able to apply that knowledge to the secondary study. Any other firm would have to start from square one and have to reread the study and have to go through the facilities to better understand them. Uh, I don't know if the end result will be the same, but I, I have a high level of confidence with the knowledge base that Bray does possess that, in my opinion, at this time, it makes a great deal of sense, given the amount of money that we're talking about, to not bid that out, to save potentially $2,000 while the cost may actually come in exactly the same as well at 17. So attached to the staff report, <coughs> I attached fee proposal 
for doing this phase. Mm -hmm. So attached to the staff report was a raised fee proposal mm -hmm. for just doing this 13 to 15 months process with the district and facilitating that process. So is that the 18,500? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. And our, our purchasing policy says anything over 15,000 needs right. multiple quotes, but then there's, there's a couple ways you could get seek waivers to that 15,000, and mm -hmm. as Jim pointed out, um, in this case, uh, it didn't make sense to bid it out even though it was only $3,000 above that. However, waivers from board policy should come to the board for approval. Because well, you're not approving anything tonight. You're just hearing, you're, you're not approving the contract tonight. Okay. Um, you're not approving going forward with this proposal with Bray. You're just hearing about this proposal this evening. Well, aren't we being asked to approve the 18500 or no, not? Not tonight. We are not. There's no, there's no motion for approving right. anything this evening. So, sure. I'm sorry, I'm still not clear from your report what that 18500 covers. It covers Bray's facilitating this 13 to 15 month process on behalf okay. of the district. So it, it covers them coming up with these focus groups. It covers um, walking the district through this 13 to 15 month process. Okay, thank you. But then as, as when we get done and, and we have a, a plan or a master plan or 20 plans or whatever how many right. plans we have, um, then, then when we finally come down to a long range plan, I'm not mm -hmm. gonna presume what any of that is. No, I'm not but either. But then at that point we would we would end up bidding out okay. who yeah. would facilitate or help us with that next phase okay. of that process. And that would not include, uh, the only thing that it would include um, is specifically the Bray architects involved, but it doesn't include the additional cost would be the financial advisor, mm -hmm. enrollment projection, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sure. all of those, um, the survey sure. company. Um, are not included in that fee. Okay. Right. And I'll also state, I mean, it, the, the, the time frame of that, again, if, if this process takes longer, we're not going to come back with it, you know, an additional services. This does not uh, equate to uh, 10 meetings. You know, again, this, quite frankly, the, uh, generally this is more of a marketing effort on, on our part to, you know, again, continue good services with, with the district. Um, so, um, you know, it, it, the costs really kind of cover more or less our overhead and, and so forth. So, mm -hmm. um, if, that, mm -hmm. if that helps out. It does, thank you. And I, I think Bray has done a good job with, with various projects in the district. Um, I do have a concern about not opening up opportunities for other firms, however. Um, and I do hear from local craftsmen and businesses that they would like a better or more fair opportunity to compete for some of the, the work of the district. And so that's why I raised those questions. But I have, I have no negative thoughts or concerns about Bray. I think you've done a good job for the district in many areas in the, for many years. So I thank you for that. Mm -hmm. and, and to be clear, again, if, again, this is all study. This is all master planning. So in terms of like electrician and those getting an opportunity that, you know, the assumption would be we would bid that work um, mm -hmm. at that particular time. So um, this, we're not performing any of that work. I'm right. not a good electrician you. at all. I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> Thanks for that clarification. <laughs> any other questions? Okie doke. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for coming Thank in. You. Thank, Thank you. For your time. Thanks. Okay, next is a rec request for future agenda items. I have one. Oh, boy. <coughs> surprise, surprise. Um, in response to our self evaluation, uh, we had mentioned that because we're one of the biggest districts in the state, we should take on a more advocacy role yeah. for legislation things. And I would like to discuss the possibility of having a resolution in support of the Wisconsin Voucher Taxpayer Transparency Bill. Um, according to the WASB website, there are currently eight districts that have done that. Eau Claire, Green Bay, Holman, Janesville, Rhinelander, Stevens Point, Stoughton, and Wausau. And uh, I'd like to perhaps discuss us maybe joining that group. Okay. Thank in you. case uh, you're, you're wondering a transparency Wisconsin Welcher Taxpayer Transparency Bill is a bill that would have, in layman's terms, a uh, spot on your property tax bill so you would know how much money is going to the voucher schools mm -hmm. and how much money the district is. Mm -hmm. it's, um, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we do that for future agenda, that would be something that then you would write up? 
do a report. You can compare that to have yeah, to um, item for the next meeting. Pretty much yeah. the eight referendums that are already done are pretty similar. Mm -hmm. This is what Eau Claire did. Okay. Um, and then they okay. all signed it. Is that okay with everybody? Mm -hmm. yeah. so that's okay. added to our, sure. okay, mm -hmm. wonderful. Anything else? Uh, just on the futures list, um, I know we had discussed a date for the quarterly board update meeting. I think that that's referring to the superintendent's uh, quarterly update. I know we had discussed a date for that. I'm pretty sure that was the first meeting in April. Right. But mm -hmm. it doesn't have a date next to it. Except we normally um, don't have it on one of the two standard meeting dates, so that's why uh, we need to get a consensus of so okay. an additional okay. meeting for the when board to meet on that. That's why it's not stated in a specific date. I thought we had discussed that for April 4th. Maybe okay. that's, yeah, that's that would be the first Wednesday that. of the month, okay. and that's always free for us. Because mm -hmm. I recall talking about how it would be the day after the election. Right. And that way, mm -hmm. um, all incumbent board members would be, mm -hmm. would be part of that process. Sure. So we probably need a survey to make sure that's clear on everyone's calendar. We'll have Sherry do the polling. That's how you remember it too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other future agenda items? Any announcements? Yes. I do have one. I attended the CESA Six Board of Control meeting last night. This is a monthly meeting I think there's one month out of the year when the group does not meet um, I was also part of their group that revised all their policies we did all their their policies and policy revision in one evening <laughs> That's oh, <great>. wow. <laughs> and uh, this is a document that they use for various things they call it as the as you see plan on a page it includes the the um, agency's mission vision and values and their strategic priorities summarized on one page written as smart goals mm -hmm. uh, with metrics that can be assessed and determined um, in part they don't have all the the dates on on here the timeline isn't maybe totally spelled out they do have years mentioned for some of these but I think it's an excellent way to summarize a strategic plan on one page rather than on 72 pages <laughs> we have Okay. And simplifies um, things for the the public and for the board. Yeah. Bearing in mind that their organization is much less complex than ours. <laughs> Correct, but they still can uh, have goals and and have clear measures uh, using the smart goal format and and, it, and so show how those can be achieved. What I find, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> What I find of note, I want to thank Dr. Herzog for this, is I love the, um, the vision to state clearly um, the high aspiration of being the most or the mm -hmm. highest, or it's, it's laudable. It's, um, mm -hmm. it's great to see, so thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks, Barb. You're welcome. Any other announcements? Okay, then we will adjourn to executive session for the purposes of Number one, considering the employment, promotion, compensation, or performance evaluation data of any public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility, 19.851C Wisconsin Statutes A, contract renewals for specific administrators, and number two, considering the disciplinary data of specific persons, 19.851F Wisconsin Statutes A, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while at school or while under the supervision of a high school, uh, sorry, of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others and engaged in conduct constituting repeated refusal or neglect to obey the rules 120.131CE Wisconsin Statutes and B. Review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while at school or while under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others, endangered the property, health, or safety of any employee or school board member of the school district in which the pupil is enrolled and engaged in conduct constituting repeated refusal or neglect to obey the rules 120.131 CE Wisconsin statutes. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Aye. 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 Aye.